Hi, I'm Dr. Katherine Torok from Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh, UPMC. I'm one of the pediatric rheumatologists and my um, specialty is pediatric scleroderma. <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you about um, one of the subtypes of scleroderma known as systemic sclerosis. Um, scleroderma in general is means sclero or hardening and derma skin, so hardening of the skin is the um, classic clinical feature. Um, the two types of scleroderma are localized scleroderma, which is more common in children, and the other form is systemic sclerosis, which is more common in adults. Um, the localized scleroderma affects mostly just the skin and the fat and the tendons underlying, whereas the systemic sclerosis um, type of scleroderma actually affects multiple organ systems, including the skin, but also heart, kidney, lung, etc. I'm going to focus right now on systemic sclerosis in children. Um, this usually occurs in kids um, around age 8 is the um, average age of onset, and this is school age, um, but typically this is an adult disease. The initial um, disease manifestations um, would be changes in the fingers, usually fingers turning cold, um, turning colors in the cold, and getting tingling and num numbness. This is called Raynaud's phenomenon. This typically is one of the first symptoms of the systemic sclerosis. Um, the blood is not getting um, perfused well to the fingertips and sometimes digital ulcers can occur. That's ulcers at the tips of the fingers um, from poor perfusion. And other changes that we also notice are puffy, um, thick hands and also swelling of the joints and um, arthritis type symptoms, painful joints, swelling of the joints. Um, the other more common um, symptom is esophageal involvement, so a lot of reflux um, is also involved. I'm just going to show you a picture of um, some of the hand involvement that I mentioned. Um, so this patient has kind of thicker, puffy fingers, and um, over time that swelling turns into that fibrotic or that hardened skin, so her skin is actually feels a little bit hard. Um, not as hard as wood, but it can get that hard. And then she also has some what we call joint contractures, so her some of her fingers are stuck almost in a claw hand position. Um, and then she also, on the underside of her fingers, has some of those ulcers I was mentioning from the poor perfusion. Right there is a, a picture um, of that ulcer from the long-standing Raynaud's. Um, so that's just an example of what I'm, I'm talking about. So those are the main ways that this disease presents. Um, there's certain subtypes of systemic sclerosis. One is the diffuse cutaneous, which um, has the skin thickening from the fingertips, and then it travels on both hands up and up, you know, up the arm and then to the trunk or the chest and also the face, and can give you what's called a mask-like facies, where your skin is so tight when it doesn't look like um, the patient is you know, smiling as much or even looks very tight, um, and also travels from the feet up as well. And this um, is pretty progressive. In a, a year or two, they'll get this hardening or thickening of the skin that travels from the um, distal parts of the body all the way to the middle part of the body. Um, and this type is associated with more organ system problems, such as heart involvement, kidney involvement, and lung involvement. Also some um, GI involvement as well. The other type is called limited cutaneous um, systemic sclerosis, and that just means that that thickening that I was discussing travels up the fingers but kind of stops at the elbows and also stops from the feet up to the knees. Um, and this is a little bit more of a slower process. They get their Raynaud's, but they may not get some of those other organ system involvement that I mentioned. Um, typically, they will have a lot of reflux issues, um, and those Raynaud's or the finger um, tip issues, and then sometimes they do have some lung involvement as well. The third type, which is actually the most common in pediatrics that we see, would be called overlap. Um, this is an overlap between systemic sclerosis and our other autoimmune diseases such as lupus or dermatomyositis. Um, so there's just different organ involvement depending on what type of, which feature of the disease that um, that child um, presents with. So that can have kind of a mixture of different things. The way we diagnose this is from these clinical manifestations I mentioned, as well as um, some blood tests do help us. The um, antibody, that ANA, anti-nuclear antibody that you may hear about in, that's positive in lupus, is also positive in um, 
95% of the patients with systemic sclerosis. Um, and then there's certain antibodies um, that are more specific called scleroderma antibody and anti-centromere antibody. Um, so if you have those antibodies, odds are that you likely do have scleroderma or that you will be prone to develop it. Um, so those do help us with the diagnosis. Um, if your child would be thought to have this disease um, or is being diagnosed with the disease, there's certain um, other tests that we do, just baseline tests to look at heart function, lung function, and GI function as well. Um, in addition to the routine laboratory tests, um, and there's some kidney tests as well. Um, so this is a little more um, of a kind of multi-organ system disease than the localized scleroderma is more just the skin and does not have the organ involvement. Um, the treatment for this for systemic sclerosis um, depends on the organ system that is involved. Um, there's different treatment if you have kidneys involved versus lung involvement, etc. Um, and they can be either by mouth or IV, so they, they vary, so I'm not going to list the names um, <clears throat> of them. And then the, for the skin thickening, most a lot of people will use uh, what's called D-penicillamine to kind of um, make the skin a little bit softer or slow down that thickness of the skin. Um, so there's kind of the overview of um, systemic sclerosis that I wanted to discuss with you today. Um, please call if you guys have any more uh, questions or visit our website. Um, the pediatric rheumatology phone number is 412-692-5081. Thank you.